This is the trailer for the official Wings of Kilimanjaro movie. It's going to be absolutely awesome. You'll have to wait for it for a few more months. But in the meantime, I thought I'd tell you my story right at the end of this trailer. Every project like this that I do for charity starts off with the gracious support of many corporations and individuals and of course friends and family and this was no different. We had a fantastic party in January before I left, supported by Woodland Hills in Kelowna. Original Joe's prepared some wonderful food. Pillar Estates and Big Surf Beer provided some liquid refreshments. The professionals provided some great entertainment and emceeing for the evening. And of course friends and family generously donated to the causes that Wings of Kilimanjaro had selected. Okay, well, it's time to give you an update. I'm here in um, Kilimanjaro, and it's been a pretty good adventure so far already. Most of my luggage arrived two days late, and then this is the last evening. We leave at 5.30 tomorrow morning, and until half an hour ago, I didn't have any of my other luggage. So what I had was my paraglider, but absolutely nothing else for climbing on the mountain. So it's been a little bit tense, but you know, everybody's here. There's a few other people like me. They've got a paraglider, but they haven't got the rest of their equipment. Um, so it's been a bit tense, but we are here. The chaotic scene of all of the porters getting organized for the trip soon morphed into organization as we started to hike up the forest trails. It was my first opportunity to meet the amazing companions that I had on this trip, people with world records, world championships, people like Squash Falconer and Babu. Uh, just an incredible opportunity to climb and fly with some of the most talented people. Okay, well, I'm walking on my own. It's the start of the climb. Porter's behind us. And it's uh, starting to get warm. But beautiful trip so far. Lovely. It was easy to feel the altitude, even though we were only at 2,500 meters. Okay, here we are. We're at, what are we at? 2,800 meters. No, we're 2,500 meters. And I think we're going to 2,800 meters. So it's getting a bit cooler, which is nice. I like that. And with that, uh, it's just Babu. Hey. <laughs> and who else? Ready. Ready. Um, she's the yeah. expert. <laughs> and a lovely forest trail. Look at that. The magnitude of what I was a part of struck me at the first camp. It was just a sea of tents and a mass of porters taking us up the mountain the next day. This was one of the largest groups that had ever attempted to climb Kilimanjaro, and so there was a lot of excitement amongst the porters as we got to our second camp, a very, very windy spot. At this point, we were teased by the initial views of Mount Kilimanjaro. As most of us decided that the wind was too strong to do much other than retire to the tents, Mad Mike Kung, a world-famous paragliding stunt pilot, decided he'd show us some amazing ground handling skills. As always, it was a privilege to be in the high mountains, and I always feel close to the heavens when I'm there. But literally, we took over the mountain with the camps. We were a massive group of people, and it was somewhat overwhelming for most of us as we watched porters lug our gear up and down the mountain. Naturally, the higher we climbed, the thinner the air became, and so your pace slowed down dramatically, and it was very evident that the rest of the climb was going to be nothing other than a physical struggle. The closer we climbed to the summit, the stronger we felt, and the vistas just entertained us all day long. It was a just a fabulous place to be. With the support of APEC out of Vancouver, I'd been able to bring some technology with me that allowed me to use solar power to keep my phones and computer charged as we climbed the mountain. Finally, summit day arrived. It's a great feeling to be standing on the summit of a, such a tall freestanding mountain with massive vistas. 
But the high summit camp brought its problems. With the cold, we had challenges with the porters who hadn't got the right equipment. And we had challenges with the fuel that froze and prevented us from being able to eat the right amount of food or drink the right amount of water. Of course, one of the amazing things about getting to any summit is the sense of achievement, but more than that, the views were absolutely dramatic at 19,340 feet. I shared my accomplishments with a few other pilots who were on the summit. And the great news was this uh, group, the Wings of Kilimanjaro, put more people on the summit in one event than anybody had done before. And physically, everybody made it to the crater rim and all but one made it to the absolute summit. Are we doing that as well? The combination of a porter strike, which left us with very little water, and of course the effects of altitude, didn't bode well for our flight the next morning. And our worst fears were confirmed when we went to the launch site and noticed that there were 65 km an hour winds, lenticular clouds all around the mountain, giving us an impossible task to get off the mountain safely. Nearly all of the pilots descended over the next two days, leaving one brave pilot, Babu, from Nepal, National Geographic Adventure of the Year, to attempt to launch two days after we initially arrived on the summit. Thankfully, he was able to get off safely and landed in a paddock close to Moshi, and we all received a very exciting telephone call saying that he'd like a ride back to the hotel. There was a tremendous celebration back at the hotel as we all looked at our accomplishments. A little sad that we couldn't all fly, but excited that we'd done what we came to do. The best was yet to come in my mind, however. Overall, the purpose of the whole trip, of course, was to raise funds for people in Tanzania. The first people that we met were a community that Plant With Purpose was working at. They'd established a community bank to help these people, first of all, save funds, but secondly, invest them in community corporate endeavors. And so people would borrow money from their own community to start businesses. It was a fascinating process and really interesting to see and something that we could certainly learn from in the Western world. After the initial meeting, we drove deeper into Maasai territory and went to look at a Magitech water project that we'd supported. It was an opportunity to meet the Maasai and of course be hosted by them. Their culture calls for them to uh, be very good hosts and so they shared food and water and danced and sang in thanks of the way that we'd been able to help them. During the process, we were able to witness the first water coming out of the taps that Wings of Kilimanjaro had supported. The excitement with the locals was obvious and it really was a pure joy to watch them dance and sing and celebrate as they had the gift of life, pure, fresh, sparkling water. At the end of the day, we witnessed a Magitech drill putting in a new drill for a new well in a different part of the territory. It was so exciting and my hat's off to Adrian McRae and Paula McRae for all of the hard work to pull wings of Kilimanjaro together. The victory is certainly the projects that they've been able to complete. In order that their legacy may continue, I would ask that you consider going to www.wingsofkilimanjaro.com and consider donating to help the people of Tanzania.